everyone, this is Ritoma. Today, I thought I could answer some questions so that I can refresh my memory or practice the whole chapter of electricity and circuits once more. So, we are going to answer some questions today. So, electricity and circuits. Now, what's the use of an electric switch in an electric circuit? So, this is a pretty interesting question actually. So, uh, a switch Okay. So, a switch A switch helps us to, you know, break or uh, it can also you know help you to close or complete the circuit this circuit. So what that means is that when you have a switch, let's say you have a switch uh, and you know many people are just really lazy so they don't want to draw many things, draw uh, many things a lot of times. So what they do is they draw very simple images of the same thing. So this is the image of a switch in its on position. And if you want to switch it off, um, you really need to know all this because at some point of time you might really need it. You get really tired of drawing diagrams which look really realistic. So you need to memorize or you know not really memorize you need to draw this diagram again and again till you get it right so this is an open switch sorry i mean this is an off uh, this is a switch which is in its off position okay this is a switch in its own position and this is an open uh, and this may uh, this uh, opens the circuit In other words, it's the position which helps us to keep the switch in its off position. So when it's on, the circuit is completed. Uh, 
prepared or closed and when it is off uh, when it's off uh, uh, it helps us to it's off it helps us to break or open the circuit right so when it's on when it's on it helps us to close or complete the circuit and when it's off it helps us to break or open the circuit right simple so how does a switch work it's very simple a switch works by breaking or completing or opening or closing the circuit very simple right now explain the role of a slider in a switch okay so the function of a slider uh, for that we need to you know look at this diagram now you see this a slide switch this slide switch is the slider now uh, this is the actual switch this switch is just um, the thing which acts like a slider so the role of the slider in a switch is to play the role of a switch. I mean, the, uh, the role of the slider as a switch in a torch is to open or close the circuit. Now, distinguish between a button cell and a solar cell. Now, well, a button cell looks, well, kind of like a button. And, you know, sometimes it is also used in toys they look something like these of course i'm not drawing really pretty pictures of these just imagine as if i'm drawing a tiny model of <laughs> uh, a tiny model of a button cell and a solar cell is a cell that works on solar power or well you know solar energy now can the electric wires at home be covered with aluminium foil instead of plastic? So, if you look at aluminium, it's a metal, so it's a good conductor. And good conductors really love electric, uh, really don't like electricity. So, if electricity really wants to go, uh, so if electricity wants to flow in, is well, it doesn't want to stop it. It doesn't want to have a conversation with it, so it, it just lets it go. And then, if that happens, you can say that that material is a conductor. Now, plastic. This plastic is a bad, bad, bad conductor. In other words, an insulator. So, Uh, so if you cover it with aluminum foil, you can get an electric shock. So it's really of no use. So the answer to this question is a big, big no. Next. Why is caution mark written with red color? What will happen if caution mark is not displayed outside electric substations and high power devices now uh so uh um, we were talking about red color, right? In fact, uh, if you uh, so first, anyways, let's actually get our time out to you know draw a tiny model 
I mean, it's not exactly a model. Let's um, think about all the colors in a rainbow. So, you know that it has, uh, so it consists of red color. You might think, why did I draw this beautiful um, shape? But you will see why I drew such a beautiful shape in a moment. Now, uh, what's the next color? Uh, right, orange. Now, do you notice anything? This orange color looked like uh, it looked like these distances. It looks like this distance is a lot bigger, or uh, this distance is a lot bigger than this distance, or you know, this distance. So, okay, uh, I got that. And now, let's move on to yellow. And let's actually do this. So, as you can see, it's truly decreasing, right? Let's speed this up a little bit. You did get the pattern right. Every time I drew the next color, that distance started to decrease. Actually, let's draw that figure right now. Now, let's actually erase all of this. Just because it will... Uh, just because the main figure is the one we haven't drawn yet. You notice all those little hills that we do all the way along. Let's first take red. And as you can see, the distance between these valleys and you know hills. Actually, uh, if you just if you're just sitting in an exam and writing down everything, you need to write crests and troughs, okay? You wanna call it that. So the distance between these crests or the distance between these troughs and uh, and well um, it looks kind of fair to see that well these look kind of like waves don't they so these dis in this distance well I can't draw them in a very nice way so I just drew them like this uh, but usually, all of these distances are exactly the same, okay? In real life, I can't draw, uh, I can't draw a figure where each of them is exactly the same. Uh, the distance between each of them is, uh, is exactly the same. It's not even um, two nanometers here and there. But yeah, it's really exact when it comes to um, wavelength. So now, this distance is called the wave right wavelength now this question actually has to do more with light than electricity but yeah it's a bit related to electricity and now, this wavelength is really, I mean, it's not really big, but it's, yeah, it's of the biggest distance in the colors of the rainbow. Uh, if you take orange, it has a slightly bluer wavelength. And the same goes for all of the colors of the rainbow. So, I'm getting tired of drawing this thing over and over again. But, yeah, you can draw it if you are really interested in drawing. But, anyways, 
I want to ask you a question. Can you tell me a pattern that you can notice here? Yeah, if you still can't find the pattern, uh, see what the pattern is in a moment. Okay, looks like we need to increase this. And this time I am really reducing the length and not drawing a whole lot of stuff here. So I just want to make this quicker. So I am drawing this really rapidly. So, as you can see, this length is decreasing, right? Okay, this is indigo. Okay, don't get confused. This is indigo. Uh, so, as you can see, the wavelength is decreasing. Now, the shorter the wavelength, the more it's going to get scattered. And the longer the wavelength, the less it's going to get scattered. So, violet is going to get scattered the most. And then indigo and then blue and then green and then yellow and then orange and then red. And you know what? The color which is least scattered is most easily visible to, well, most substances. Well, I'm not saying opaque substances. But, yeah... And it can be seen through most substances. So, anyways, this, uh, since this color is least scattered, it is best to use as a danger sign. So, that's the reason why red color is used as, uh, you know, uh, 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 it's, uh, that's why the red color is used for the portion mark. For writing the caution mark. So, next, what would happen if caution mark is not displayed outside electric substations and high power devices? Well, if it wasn't like that, you just can't imagine how much risk we would have to get into. Because if that really happened, it would be frequent to get electric shocks. So, so, as you can see, um, here, if the wires I'm using brown color to show the copper wires and here are the interiors and you might think why am I um, talking about uh, conductors and insulators you'll see a moment now this caution mark is displayed outside electric substations and usually electric substations carry, uh, uh, and usually when uh, uh, an electric current flows through this and uh, since it also said high power devices you know that it has something to do with that's right it is something to do with the amount of electric current to go through the wire so here the electricity that flows through this is very high the, in the um, you know you can measure it and in terms of volts and it can even reach up to 220 volts so that's really dangerous so in case the danger sign is not displayed around it uh, I suppose 
it will be a bit more helpful. And we're down somewhere over there. Probably. resistance to it 
and it causes friction. Now this friction generates heat. Now this amount of heat becomes so 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 large that the thing itself begins to glow and this is similar to when lava glows you know uh, when lava you know erupts it's just so 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 hot that it glows uh, this is unlike how uh, glow stick glows or things like that but I'm talking about well usual things that glow so this tungsten filament now tungsten well we like to give names to these parts which do a very special job so we really want to call it a filament because we just want to name it that so okay that part's called the filament and the tungsten offers a lot of resistance to it and it becomes just so hot that it eventually begins to glow now you know that if there is oxygen around it, right? Oxygen around, then it might start to burn, and when it burns, it just burns away, and then there's nothing. Well, and then it, uh, and then the whole thing or the whole circuit is just open, right? The whole circuit is open. Now, if the circuit is open, there is nothing connecting that with, well, the battery or the cell. So, it, uh, so that means that the circuit is open. And when the circuit is open in the bulb, or the bulb itself acts like a switch, I mean, if the bulb, if the bulb's filament just burns away, you know what we call that bulb, right? A fused bulb. And now, when this special thing happens, it's not special, it burns away and there's nothing connecting that, so it doesn't glow, right? So what can we do to prevent this? It is very tiring to buy 100 filaments for lighting up the bulb 100 times. So, what do we do? We take this bulb and then we remove all the air from it. We create a vacuum and then place a glass you know, bulb around it. And even though that's not the main feature of the bulb, the bulb itself gets a name from the bulb of glass that surrounds it, right? Yeah. But you might see that there is something written on it called a gas. Now, what's that gas? It definitely must not be oxygen. Uh, and carbon dioxide and nitrogen really affect it. So, uh, uh, first, uh, first, when these bulbs were created, the inside of the whole thing was, uh, the inside was, you know, the inside was made so that it doesn't have any air in it. And, so the bulb, you know, glowed, but, you know what, since air particles, uh, slowly, people realize that, and, uh, that air particles can bounce, uh, okay, before I tell you anything about that, you need to know something, see, all this heat which is generated, make, tungsten go up and this tungsten eventually builds up on the surface of this glass you know, bulb and then it becomes orangish, uh, orangish or blackish due to which it can't glow if uh, it well shift enough glows but, but you don't really get uh, the required amount of light from the bulb and that's the problem. Hmm. So, to avoid this, uh, people started to research more about this thing. So, 
they soon realized that air particles can bounce back those particles of tungsten back onto the filament. What a smart idea, right? So, people realized that it would be more helpful if they could put a gas inside that. So that those gas particles can bounce back that those pieces of tungsten back onto the filament so it still glows. Right? So it increased the longevity of the bulb. So after that, we decided to fill it up with a gas. Now, this gas mustn't be oxygen or else it will surely enough to burn. So, what do we do? We fill up with argon. But, you know, argon is pretty cheap, but it can do a lot of severe things to the electric, you know, on the electricity which comes out of it. So, to avoid that, we mix mm, less than... 1 over 200 of all the argon that's inside and less than 1 over 200 of the argon that's inside of nitrogen so that basically means we fill up we take some nitrogen which is 1 over 1 uh, uh, that's, that's a, uh, we take a small quantity of nitrogen and its quantity must be lower than half a percent of all the argon that's inside and then mix it with all the argon and put it back inside. And then, well, that's the gas that's inside and well, the lamp holds the collect, uh, collection, well, just holds the lamp in place or the bulb in place. That's not a really important part of the bulb, but we just give it there. Yeah. So, why should we wear slippers or shoes while handling electrical appliances? Well, usually slippers are made of a special thing called rubber. And so are some shoes made of, okay? I'm not saying all shoes, but... Well, I don't think there are many shoes made of rubber. Uh, but shoes and slippers, I mean rubber slippers and shoes, are usually insulators. So if we are about to get an electric shock, they just prevent the electricity from going inside and uh, I mean flowing more. So it prevents us from getting an electric shock, right? Yeah. Now, explain the conditions under which a bulb glows when it is connected by wires to the, a cell. Firstly, the bulb should not be fused. So, electricity can flow safely through the entire thing. And secondly, the uh, and then uh, and then you must be sure that the cell uh, well there are a lot of conditions for this uh, then you must be sure that the cell can generate electricity because if there is no electricity how will the bulb flow right so you need to make sure that the bulb can provide you with electricity and Thirdly, the wire should be connected to both the terminals of the electric cell and to the and to the bulb and short circuiting must not take place. Right? Yeah. So these are the conditions under which a bulb glows when it is connected by wires to a cell. Next, how can you say that whether a given object is a conductor or an insulator? Well, the simple answer to that is by a conduction tester. So a conduction tester is something using which you can test whether an object is a conductor or an insulator. So basically if you want to see what it looks like, it uh, looks something like 
this. I'm not drawing really pretty pictures here. Oh, I don't think this picture is really pretty. And this is the symbol for a ball. If this is really messy, there you go. A nice little bun. And here is my cell. This is a conduction desktop. And there you go. That's our conduction desktop. And in case you don't know anything about this, I will write this down for you. Okay? There. That was. Now, 
it really wants me to explain everything here. So, firstly, this thing is the little bulb, as you can see here. And this is the reflector. Mm, you cannot see it properly, but uh, this is the reflector. Uh, and this is the plastic casing, okay? We cannot forget that. This is the plastic casing, this whole thing. And this is, well, another plastic part. And these are the electric cells, which is the battery. Okay. And now, you cannot forget the switch, right? This That's a slide switch. And it does have this little part to it, which is kind of like a tiny spring, and it is, it, and it helps uh, the batteries to come in contact with the bulb. Even though it looks somewhat like a wire, um, it's actually a conductor spring connected by a wire, and it's also part of the circuit. Yeah. Great. Give a reason for this. So, the glass. Uh, 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 so, explain that the glass chamber of an electric bulb is evacuated. So, um, this really happened in ancient times, mind you. But I know that we have real early ancient times, like the well, BCE period. I mean BCP, yeah? which means before uh, the birth of Christ, but um, yeah, and this happened when the first bulb was made. So as you saw over here, uh, there is a gas here, right? But not necessarily. Uh, the, the gases ensures that the longevity of the bulb increases, right? So, it's, uh, so not uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be so, but sometimes it's evacuated so that, uh, but it's just, uh, it just happens sometimes, so. Uh, the glass chamber of an electric bulb is evacuated uh, so that the filament of the bulb doesn't burn away. That's it. Next. Tap water conducts electricity while distilled water does not. So, tap water conducts electricity while distilled water con uh, does not. This happens because the tap water is a conductor while the distilled water is an insulator. Very simple. But you might ask me, because that's not the complete picture. I can't see why it's not the complete picture. And I can't see why you might ask me this question. Tap water and distilled water. Now, tap water is just water. Uh, it's water, right? while distilled water is pure H2O right so tap water consists of many minerals many other substances apart from just H2O or water you know that so uh, and this but distilled water on the other hand consists of pure H2O or pure water and so you see why it's a conductor and uh, while the distilled water is an insulator yeah right and usually when you wash your hands you do not use distilled water to wash your hands right <laughs> that's just way too funny so what do we do we what we usually wash our hands with tap water so usually when our hands are in contact with water we are uh, uh, we mean that our, ha our hands are in contact with tap water usually right so that's why 
Many people say do not touch electrical appliances with wet hands. Now, we need to say why are metals used to make electrical wires. This is so easy. Metals are used to make electrical wires because they are good conductors of course. So, goodbye and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.